All right, good morning. Welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name is John Norton. I'm a mechanical engineer with NVIDIA. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a system architect at NVIDIA. And today we're here to talk to you about the NVIDIA MGX architecture. So first off, we'll talk about uh, some of the challenges we see with deploying accelerated computing uh, across data centers. Uh, we'll introduce you to MGX, talk about some of the details, talk about uh, some of the features of a recent contribution derived from MGX, and then share with you the growing ecosystem and how you can get involved and how we can have further collaboration with OCP. So the need for accelerated computing, uh, obviously it's everywhere um, across different hardware, software, uh, requiring this, uh, the need. Um, this includes data processing, uh, 3D modeling, uh, computer-aided uh, medical design of drugs, um, weather uh, forecasting, as well as robotics, and of course, AI. So in the past, uh, uh, a lot of this has been centered around uh, CPUs, but uh, we see that there's a huge need for GPUs to accelerate that uh, uh, computing capability, and also a need to do this in time-to-market fashion. Right, so NVIDIA has a long history of contributing, <coughs> contributing to OCP, uh, the most recent of which is the GB200 NVL72 contribution. That was announced in the keynote on Tuesday. So within that contribution is the MGX rack infrastructure as well as the MGX compute and switch tray. There's some key features and design details that we're gonna go into in this presentation, but the kind of high level takeaway right now is this is a OCP contribution built on top of OCP specifications but it's also a product that is derived from the MGX architecture, and it's an example of how we can use that to rapidly create and deploy a specific accelerated computing solution. So what is MGX? Uh, basically, MGX uh, stands for Modular GPU Accelerator. Um, and as mentioned before, you know, there's a need to kind of use uh, GPUs as a centric uh, part of the um, Server architecture, um, and you know, one of the things that we wanted to accomplish with that was to be able to uh, service not just uh, you know CPUs but also GPUs and DPUs. And uh, time to market was a critical factor to be able to um, take uh, things to uh, from design into a actual product uh, as quickly as possible, and also be able to take uh, different products that span multiple generations and still yet be compatible within that. Uh, uh, hardware um, uh, in the server design. And uh, just like OCP is, you know, we want this to be open and flexible uh, to be able to be used across different vendors, uh, different uh, um, system manufacturers, and uh, across the industry. So let's take a deeper dive into uh, some of the highlights of what uh, MGX is uh, as an architecture. So on the left, you can kind of see basically there's uh, four different um, sections in the, in the system. Um, you see the top, uh, top light gray zone there, that's basically a short bay zone, which is largely used for storage uh, um, devices, like E1.S, U.2, uh, E3.S, but also has the uh, ability to um, uh, place uh, power uh, as PSU and bus bar. Um, right below that is a uh, HPM zone, basically, this is a, a motherboard uh, base for uh, the system, which could include the CPU as well as GPU. Um, and it comes in two form factors. Uh, the width uh, of the full width, which is called MGX, and then uh, half width, which is called micro MGX. And uh, next to that, you see that there's a cooling zone, basically, uh, which you can use for air cooling with fans or have a manifold there for liquid cooling applications. And on the bottom there, you see that there's a longer bay zone, a long bay zone. Basically, it's uh, capable of housing a full length uh, PCIe card, uh, full height. Um, and it's uh, basically uh, ability to take in NICs as well for uh, various cabling applications. So for cold out cabling, um, the, the system is able to support both uh, bus bar applications, so CSP, as well as enterprise uh, using PSUs. 
Uh, the form factor comes in um, a native 19 inch, but it also covers both 1U, 2U, and 4U form factors. Um, and it can expand you know, beyond that to 6U as well as 8U. Um, on the right, you see, you know, as I mentioned before, that the native uh, width is 19. And um, you could use a adapter rails to be able to uh, convert that to a 21 inch, uh, um, into a 20 inch rack. And uh, John will go into that a little bit uh, more later on why we started with the 19. Right, so as Tim mentioned, uh, within the HPM zone, we can support two uh, form factors of boards. One, the full width MGX form factor, the other being the micro MGX, as we call it, uh, half width form factor. So the micro MGX is sized such that you can drop two in the same footprint of a full size MGX. And as we mentioned, they're both designed to operate within that 19 inch form factor, which we'll touch on more later. Uh, most importantly, these are both built off of the MDNO form factor within OCP. And on the next slide, we have some kind of comparisons of the similarities and, and uh, differences on where we made some changes for the accelerated computing application. So common features are board size, mounting holes, <coughs> board pan uh, interface zones, bottom side keep out zones. And then two key areas where we differentiated are the zoning and the uh, I.O. connectivity. So the zoning on the board is shown, shown here on the left. In the back of the uh, form factor, we established the UQD and cable interface zones. Uh, that's such that the board can interoperate with the connectivity in, and the blind man connectivity in the back of the rack. Uh, we'll touch more on that later as well. In the middle is the compute zone of the form factor, and at the front, the I.O. and signal zone. As I mentioned, we uh, deviated from MDNO in that instance and implemented a cable interface versus the card edge interface. The advantages we saw there were twofold, uh, one being that the cable allows us to place the form factor anywhere within the tray, and in addition, it allows us to be flexible in how we configure the I.O. going to the front of the tray. So Tim's going to talk a little bit more about how we take advantage of that. So MGX, one of the key uh, features that it has is uh, modularity uh, with the, our base system. Um, and basically, uh, you know, as Sean mentioned, uh, there's I.O. needs uh, across, uh, I guess, different applications and different configurations. So uh, what uh, this base system allows is to use common industry form factors um, to be able to be housed in these bays, to make it a little bit more accessible and replaceable and upgradable. Um, and so basically, the you know, form factors that we kind of call out here is basically PCIe, uh, E1.S, U.2, CRPS, et cetera. And so if you start from the purple uh, block there, it's basically our type B bay, uh, which is basically a full height, uh, full length uh, PCIe card. And uh, placing three of those inside of a uh, 19th width chassis, um, you have a, a little space left over that's you know, basically type A. And so uh, type C is basically a combination of type um, A and B. And then type D is just another combination of the earlier blocks um, as well as type E. So there, there's two uh, different standard links that we um, currently call out in the spec. Uh, one is a short length, basically the length of a you know, typical short uh, um, storage device, uh, 133 millimeters. And then we have a longer, uh, uh, bay, uh, basically the length of a full-length PCIe 12.3-inch uh, card. So one other uh, thing that we wanted to accomplish through MGX was to basically uh, be interoperable, not just within a particular um, system manufacturer, but also across uh, multiple uh, systems and different vendors and different, uh, um, I guess, uh, ODMs. And so we came up with a uh, interoperably um, a standard around the, the bays so that you could actually take bays from one manufacturer and be able to stick it into another chassis. And so there's uh, um, inter these imp interoperability blocks uh, basically allow you to check uh, um, the latching mechanism as well as the rails that uh, uh, allow you to slide in the, the bay into the cages as well as the, the form factor size of those bays. Um, another area that we've uh, took a, a pretty strong stance in is, is the um, 
using common industry connectors uh, for uh, the interfaces that are on the HPM. Um, and basically, we uh, followed the ATX kind of mindset in the sense of uh, being able to have the motherboard be the central point for control. Um, and you know, the connectors that, that are on there are uh, based uh, around a single set of pinouts rather than a flexible uh, set so that even motherboards across different motherboard manufacturers are compatible with the, um, within the system. And so you can see here um, we use MCIO, uh, the 74 position, as well as uh, the Gen Z 4, uh, 4C plus uh, for the DCSCI, as well as uh, some of these uh, panel interfaces which use a SlimSAS by 4 and SlimSAS by 8. All right, so we covered a fair bit of detail there about the trays. Um, we also want to share with you some of the key features of the MGX rack that's included in this contribution. So as I mentioned, this is built on top of OCP specifications, specifically the ORV3 spec. But we made some key changes to meet the needs we saw of accelerated computing. All of this with the goal to build a common data center infrastructure for these GPU-centric designs that we've been talking about. Um, so. First off, we established uh, a 1RU form factor within the tray. I'll talk more in detail on that. But we physically mounted the EIA flanges you see in common EIA racks within the ORV3 rack. In addition, we've uh, implemented blind mate uh, cooling in the back of the rack. So we provide all of the mounting hardware, alignment hardware, uh, structural support, and manifold designs required to make that work. Um, it's also important to note that's built on top of the UQD and UQDB uh, specs from OCP. So another example of where we're leveraging there. Uh, in addition, in the back of the rack, we have a, a deeper bus bar. So we maintain the width of the bus bar, but to increase ampacity, increase the depth. So up to 1,400 amps capable there. We also uh, are providing an optional extension frame. So that extends the footprint of the rack to 1,200 millimeters, um, basically encloses all the hardware that's in the back of the rack there to protect it, and that's available uh, for people to use. But it's also important to note that this rack can be deployed within existing traditional 19-inch data centers today. So if you have a hot aisle cabling implementation and an EIA uh, traditional data center you wanted to deploy in, you can simply remove the bus bar and you have a EIA rack ready to go there. All right, so as I mentioned, we implemented a RU infrastructure in this rack. So there's some key advantages we saw in doing that. One of them, most obviously, is you simply get more devices. You get 48 units versus 44. But in addition to that, by making the tray narrower, we actually get room to implement blind mate latching, additional uh, structural support for the rack, and that allows us to support the blind mate force associated with the cable cartridge interconnects and the uh, UQD interfaces. But most importantly, what that also did is it expanded the front I.O. cabling volume that's available today in ORV3. So we, by implementing that form factor, gain about twice as much cabling volume. And that's important because as we looked at accelerated computing applications across the board, the demand for I.O. cabling coming out the front of these servers was extremely high. So uh, you can envision as you build the stack up the rack, that cabling bulk grows and grows and grows. So some schematics and illustrations here show how a 19-inch tray can overcome that additional cable bulk and still be removed, whereas a 21-inch tray would interfere and have challenges. So just one more thing to note also, by establishing a 19-inch form factor as our point of investment, that gave us one thing to focus on, one form factor to invest in and deploy at scale, and that one form factor can be deployed into any EIA or OCP environment. Uh, you can go into an OCP environment simply with adding adapter brackets. So that's an example of how this, this architecture allowed us to drive time to market down. So uh, these are some uh, pictures of uh, you know, MGX accelerator server uh, designs 
basically on the top row is uh, basically to you uh, designs around you know some of the Nvidia products, but also an x86 uh, uh, mainstream server. Um, uh, below that, you see examples of uh, a one new, both uh, uh, air and liquid uh, applicated uh, uh, servers. And then below that is also our for you setup where we have vertical PCI cars in that uh, system. And we also have a derivation off of uh, the TU design that's a short chassis, basically targeting uh, telecom and uh, edge computing applications. And obviously you can see from the uh, on the right side that is the um, GB272, uh, MVL72 uh, rack system. So uh, MJX, you know, obviously has a lot of uh, uh, modularity and what we have here is, you know, just a various building blocks that are used without, within the MJX ecosystem. And so, um, you know, obviously different form factors, two form factors of the motherboard. Uh, we have different chassis um, heights uh, as well as lengths. And uh, we also have different power inputs, you know, PSU, bus bar. Um, and we also have, you know, obviously service different type of devices in these base structures and support both uh, uh, fan and liquid cooling uh, applications with these building blocks. Um, this, this is just, a, uh, I guess, an existing portfolio of uh, MGX uh, components, um, uh, vendors, and manufacturers in the um, ecosystem. Um, this is just, you know, a side of what I think we've kind of started off with, and then we're looking to, uh, we're asking you to join join this uh, ecosystem, be part of this ecosystem, and um, make a, you know a presence within within that ecosystem. And um, basically, you know, we do also have uh, MJX system manufacturers that have been involved in producing systems based around uh, all of the MJX uh, um, around the MJX spec. And also, um, you know, Intel and AMD have partnered with the MJX spec uh, to be able to provide uh, uh, customer reference boards um, in both the micro MJX and MJX form factors that are being currently used today. All right, so one more plug for the contribution. The MJX rack and trade contribution is available here at this link. Um, but most importantly, uh, our call to action today is to point out that accelerated computing continues to grow. Um, we're really looking for further collaboration with DCMHS and other OCP work streams to maximize commonality, and really looking forward to working together on future contributions and optimizations, and ultimately our goal being improve time to market, improve commonality and reuse across the industry for accelerated computing solutions. All right, so with that, we'll open it up to questions. It, it can actually handle both, so it's, it just really depends on what the rack is uh, capable of doing, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right. All right. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Thank you.